Swollen ankles. Very common question in the clinic. But two of the most common questions are what causes swelling and pain around the ankle and what can cause ankle pain and swelling without injury? Well, in fact, I think mine are a little puffy right now. And the reason is because my arterial supply is going down to the feet uh, and the venous supply that's returning it to my heart is occluded because I'm sitting on it. So that is a very, very, very common uh, thing that happens in the practice. Nothing to worry about, more serious things are venous insufficiency, which are local or multiple areas that are either occluded or clotted. And then of course, the really dangerous one, which is the DVT or the deep venous thrombosis. Uh, patients have not only a swollen ankle or swollen ankles, but pain behind the calf that radiates to the back of the knee. Usually after surgery or an injury, uh, we tell them to go straight to the emergency room so that clot does not go free into the lung, which is uh, life-threatening called a pulmonary embolism. Now, back to less scary stuff. Uh, there's also local problems that you all know about, which is the arthritis. Main one is osteoarthritis. That is just uh, aging, an ankle that is a little bit beat up from uh, old injuries, peeling away of the cartilage, a structure below the cartilage that's damaged. That can swell at the end of the day with too much activity as well. Then there are your non-local or systemic conditions that causes ankle pain and swelling. We mentioned the venous supply, but of course in the cardiovascular system, the heart is involved sometimes and the most common is congestive heart failure. Uh, kidneys, liver, the endocrine system. Uh, but the most common one we see in the office is gout. That's uh, usually a genetic predeterminance. Uh, but the kidneys are involved and high levels of uric acid can crystallize. These crystals cause a foreign body reaction in the joint and those who have had it, it's very uh, red, swollen, and painful. Reactive arthritis, the top three are rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic lupus, and uh, also uh, psoriasis. Uh, these of course involve more labs and blood samples. Well, I hope again that was helpful. If you have any questions, you can place them in the comments section. Thanks for tuning in. Stay healthy and one step ahead.